Yes, this is experiment two. This is just going to be brief. The rate of reaction of sodium thiosulfate. This is sodium thiosulfate. Um, sodium thiosulfate um, with nitric acid. That's hydrogen triazine nitrate five. So when this um in aqueous sol um, solution, we're going to have this ions in aqueous solution. While for nitric acid, we'll be having H plus the nitric nitrate ion, and essentially this is going to react. Okay, this is sodium nitrate can go up. But this is what we're looking at. So we'll be having um, the hydrogen ion from the nitric acid and the thiosulfate ion to give you. If you look at this reaction very well, we're going to be precipitating sulfur. Sulfur will be precipitated but in the solution. So we're going to have this. And if you look closely very well, you can see that we can, um, the presence of oxygen water can be produced. And aside from water, we can still have um, another sulfur. This is one. can still give us sulfur oxide. Sulfur oxide we will be given off from the reaction. Essentially, the rate of reaction is monitored as a result of the precipitation of sulfur. So the rate of reaction is um, related to the precipitation of sulfur from the thiosulfate. So definitely, you know, this is a first order because we're interested in just one. And this is why the concentration or the volume of thiosulfate will be varied while that of the nitric acid will be kept constant. We have two sulfur, two sulfur here, two hydrogen. This is one, so I have to add one here. I'll have to add two hydrogens here, so it's balanced like this. Now, the rate of reaction can be determined by determining by measuring the time it takes for precipitate of sulfur to form in the solution. Now, the addition of water, you're going to be adding some water, some volume of water. When the reaction mixture becomes more dilute, it makes the reaction mixture to become more dilute, which reduces the concentration of the reactants. According to the rate equation, we know that rate is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants. So you can see we have reactants of um, sodium thiosulfate and nitric acid. And the uh, addition of water makes the reaction mixture more dilute which reduces the concentration of these reactants. We know that rate is directly proportional to concentration of reactant. So for the additional water dilute set, now according to the rate equation, which is given as this, so we can introduce a constant, okay, which A can be that of, that of the thiosulfate. Then um, let me rewrite this. So we can have R equals to K sulfate ion and um, the, the hydrogen ion coming from the nitric acid. So we're going to have this essentially as the rate equation. Now there will be a decrease in the concentration of the reactants due to the dilution with water, which will resulting in a decrease in the rate of reaction because the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration meaning that as the concentration is increasing the rate is increasing but the addition of water tends to reduce the rate of the reaction and diluting the concentrations of these reactants and now this will result to um, help to achieve a more significant measuring time so the dilution with water will allow you to have a more significant measuring time meaning that the rate of reaction will be slowed down in order to increase the time for these reactions to occur now to carry out this experiment you have a clean white paper you're going to have a clean white paper you can mark the white paper with a sign like this so on this white paper, you place a beaker, just a beaker over it, such a way that you can see through, through this mark. 
Now in the beaker would contain the measured volume of sodium disulfate. Now once the beaker is placed, you can see through this mark containing sodium disulfate. Then introduce your measured volume of nitric acid into it. As soon as you introduce it, start timing. Now, once you start timing, you get to observe the formation of precipitate right inside the beaker, which becomes cloudy. Now, the disappearance, your inability to see this mark as the reaction takes place, tells you that the reaction has fully occurred. That means sulfur has been precipitated. So, that is what you're going to do. And immediately, you can't see this sign, then you stop the top stopwatch and take your time. Now you can carry this experiment up to T1, T2, T3, and then take the average to get a better time in seconds. So once you've been able to get your observations recorded, you are going to be plotting a graph of rates, okay, with units S inverse against concentration of the sodium thiosulfate now the concentration of this so we know why it is the concentration of this the nitric acid um concentration was kept constant so the rate is dependent upon the concentration of one of the reactant species meaning that of the thiosulfate ion so this significantly tells you it's a first order reaction so for you to get the rate of the reaction from your time let's say you had an average value of let's say 20.56 to get the rate the rate will be equal to on your rate column is going to be 1 over 20.56 so whatever it gives you is the rate in seconds inverse so you're going to have a table that looks like this Sulfate, then you have your T1, T2, T3. Then you can take at the average. Let's see, the average was Tx. So you're going to take the let's say the average was Tx. Then you add let's say 20.56. So you're going to have 1 over T here, 1 over Tx, which is the rate. This is the rate. So 1 over this inverse of this will give you the rate. The unit is second inverse. The unit here is second. Okay. And the unit here is smaller you can just take um the given volume you're given and change that so you're going to have a series of rates of concentrations the rate of reaction then you have the concentrations so going by your table you follow this entrant to plot the graph so the next clip i'm going to show you an example how to calculate um to show the rate law of an equation okay rate law of an equation and how to calculate the rate constant rate constant which is k that will be in the next video just below this video you can watch that and how to know the order of a reaction you have to calculate it so that will be in the subsequent video just after this one